Salutations, Niaja. How are you? So we are going to do um, a couple more poems from Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. Where the Sidewalk Ends. Okay? So remember, we talked a little bit about where would he come up with a title like that? That if the sidewalk were to end, right? And there was a spontaneous sinkhole that just appeared in the ground, what would happen? Everything would start to collapse. Everything around it, things would be pulled down into the earth. And so um, if that were to happen, there would be something called what? Chaos or a lack of order. So when there's a lack of order, things can be as silly, they can be in disarray. It can get really, really crazy. So the idea is that when we want to create that kind of tone in our writing, we may write about things that seem like nonsense. It doesn't seem like it would make sense. But because we are operating not in what we see or not in what's real, but it's nonfiction and that it's based on our imagination. Okay? So things that wouldn't ordinarily happen in real life can happen in our imagination. So I'm going to start with two poems. One is called Early Bird and the other one is called Sky Seasoning. Okay. All right. So let's read Early Bird. So there's this colloquial saying where it's like the early bird gets the worm. And it means like when you rise early, you get the best pick at what's available. Okay. So let's see. But that's not always the case. So we're going to read. Okay. Oh, if you're a bird, be an early bird and catch the worm for your breakfast plate. If you're a bird, be an early, early bird. But if you're a worm, sleep late. What does that mean? So the worm is the prey. Okay. And the bird is the predator. So it says, Oh, if you're a bird, be an early bird and catch the worm for your breakfast plate. If you're a bird, be an early, early bird. But if you're a worm, sleep late. So the idea is, it's kind of flipping this old colloquial saying on its head and saying like, hmm, well, when you're the early bird, you get the worm. But if you're, that's great for the bird, but not so great for the worm. So let's take it, let's take a look at it from the worm's perspective. Instead of always worrying about making sure the bird gets fed, why don't we make sure that the worm stays safe? Now, it's all a part of the circle of life. So I don't want you to think like, oh, that's a terrible thing. God created nature to be self-sustaining. So yes, the bird does eat the worm, but the worm can, but the bird can produce um, eggs that we can use to put back in the earth that the the worm can use to consume. And we, and we, um, and when he defecates, we have what? Compost, right? So they kind of have like this pseudo symbiotic relationship um, where they kind of work together, kind of, sort of, even though it's not necessarily direct, direct, but they do work together. Um, let's see. The second poem we're going to do is called Sky Sees Me. A piece of sky broke off and fell through the crack in the ceiling right into my soup. Kerplop. I really misstate that I usually hate lentil soup, but I usually hate lentil soup, but I ate every drop. Delicious, delicious. A bit like plaster, but so delicious. Goodness sake. I could have eaten a lentil soup lake. It's amazing the difference a bit of sky can make. So now, do you really think that the sky fell out, that a piece of sky fell off the top of the earth? No, I don't think it did. But chances are, um, if you're using your imagination and it's a bowl of soup that he usually doesn't like, if he imagined that a piece of sky fell into it, and instead of just looking at it as what it is, imagining it something different, he can imagine it to be much more delicious than it may be. So that's one of the things. You have to use your imagination, especially when you're in circumstances that may, be, may make you feel uncomfortable or may make you feel weird. Um, using your imagination can help you see things from a different perspective. Now, there's an interesting part of figurative language in this poem. Do you remember? We talked about it, but it was kind of last year. Do you remember? Automatopoeia. And automatopoeia is where we assign um, a word to a sound. So kerplop is not a thing. It's not like, oh, let me go look at my kerplop. It's a sound 
that we've assigned a word to. So that's what an automatopoeia is, okay? All right. Okay, so can you say can you say that word? I love it. I love to say it. Automatopoeia. So those are the two poems for this particular session. And if you'd like, you can try to write a poem yourself. Think about the most nonsensical thing that you can ever imagine and just give me three sentences about it, okay? And then we'll talk about it next time, all right? So take care of yourself. I love you, baby, and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Peace.